doing my movie notes video in a different location this time. So this is where I watched it. We got, that's where I put the DVD in. And DVD today is Fighting for Fertility. And so I'm going to go through my movie notes for, uh, movie notes on Fighting for Fertility, 2021 film. So I watched it today, Wednesday, 17 July, 2024. So my 17 July, 2024 viewing. Uh, takeaways have changed a little bit uh, since I last watched this and I didn't do a movie notes video at that time so I'm happy I'm doing it this time because it was a lot more like whoosh, the last time I watched it so this time it was a little bit better. I did take some notes as I went through so I'm going to describe this as a shared uh, biographical film about a few professionals and a few people slash couples trying to have children and their journey to have children after being designated as having less than desirable fertility metrics. Not like horrendous fertility metrics, just like less than desirable. So they might have to go an alternative group. Um, and I'm Tannis Corley, Leonardo She, Her, Hers of Seattle. And so I'm going to, before I jump into some of my notes, which some are about the movie and some of it is kind of like extrapolating to myself. So I'm between 31.00 years of age and I'm in 32.00 years of age. I have not ever been pregnant. I have not donated anything, not me nor my soulmates have like, or had anything sent in or frozen or anything like that. There's no, um, so there we go. Um, but a note about the film, I appreciate the honesty of these people to put their stories in this movie. Their kids could watch it later and learn about their parents' journey. Yes, some people hide how they conceive and these are people who are so open. They're like, we'll put this on television and we'll sh like have something to show our kids later that we were open about this and we're honest about this. So good, good, good parenting. So, um, from my perspective. They said in here, let's see, I think I think I got this statistic here. It's that low sperm count in men has gone down, what was it, over 50% over the past 40 years. So they said that um, it's not a it's not a family thing. It's like uh, environmental. So like living conditions or body conditions. I would probably go with social conditions too. Um, but that, that's my own reason. So, so environmental conditions, right? Part of an ecosystem includes social interactions, the environment. Um, it did, it brought up racism and some metrics are higher for different races. So uh, what, what I gleaned from this was that came in at the geographical location of fertility centers. So I'm, I'm, I might put this in my moving and moving streamlined playlist because if somebody's having kids or trying to get pregnant and wants to be near a fertility center, that might factor in as like the number one for moving. All right, okay. And then, so those are kind of my two big things. And then it goes through a bunch of different cases and stuff like that. Um, and there was a transgender woman to man who got pregnant um, with his partner. And um, there's a, I did, a, my, read an autobiography on somebody with sexual orientation stuff. Now I'm reading one for a trans person and I have an, I put another book on hold for I think, sexual orientation. So I was like, seems to be a, a recurring theme in this cluster of stuff I'm doing. So I just let's, it, it's, it was not intended that way, but it is that way. Um, okay, so I have two, three kind of big notes. What, uh, so here's a note. For my soulmates and I, uh, it for us is natural conception in childbirth or no children. Each of us may be infertile slash sterile. I do not know of anyone in my family conceiving slash getting pregnant by any means other than natural conception. And my parents gave birth to me via natural childbirth. Me like no C-section, no drugs, no meds, no, like no nothing. My mom was just like, Whoa. yeah, she was super woman. And so for us, it's natural or, or nothing. Um, and I'll get into that a bit, and I'm going to go through two of my soulmates. So what is the Franchica Mbappe? So Franchica is a Russian hamster. Uh, French is, it's Franchica means French Africa. Franchica Mbappe, perspective on Killian and me. Uh, wants, it wants Mama and Papa to be happy. And he's really, really wants Mama and Papa to focus on the Russian hamster. It, uh, critters in the backyard and their conversation in the tree canopy as I lay in bed and read my books. They talk about me and be like, we want her undivided attention. And they'll like, you know, sometimes it's kind of like, if I, if I bring up having human children, they don't necessarily take to that very well. Like, like the squirrels and bunnies and stuff are like, no. And the tohees are like, you bring up human children and I'm going to hop off. 
you know, so they, they're making a case for undivided attention towards the non-humans. And so what might life be like, right? Just say me and my Kylian Mbappe. So we spend $1,291 for one meal each day. Okay. Um, right. Uh, you, okay. So there, there's one, uh, work through our infertility story together, including doctor appointments, move, uh, if slash as necessary to accommodate employer acceptance of or not acceptance of uh, us not having children. Right? If that's a deal breaker for an employer, then I might have to mute. Uh, do we do a piece slash videos negotiating him using his name slash birth date with his club pre-marriage, post-marriage, and any steps in between? So like take Killian and his lookalike, and I don't know what the professional word for that is, right? And me and do they do like a piece? that they put in like wherever they put it in video form or, or and or written form or whatever. And like, it's the three of us sitting down with people and we like talk through negotiations about what does that transition look like? All right, like stuff like that, All right? It'd be great for the kids if we had kids, right? To be able to see. So this person's Killian and this person's Killian's look alike and this one's famous, you know, that kind of stuff. But actually having that documented publicly so the kids can go and watch it, you know, we're about being transparent and honest and that way the kids don't get confused. Oh, wait, which one's Killian or which one's the next example? Josh, that yeah, kind of thing. Um, my, my, my soulmates are loyal to me and only me. They don't have other women. So, I, and I have my soulmates, <laughs> but that, that could be confusing all on its own. So there's the Killian example. Um, then with my boyfriend, Josh Curley, and already perhaps, uh, this is a moving thing. So perhaps his hair is dyed, becoming like black or blue or green when he arrives to move me in with him. So if we're confused about impersonation, especially thinking of kiddos in the future, or if he comes to move me and there's somebody who impersonates him, right, just dye the hair, different color. <laughs> um, so not saying he will, but that's like one way to reduce uh, concern over impersonation. People being like, oh, it's, it's really somebody else. Right? Okay, uh, Brooks, the running shoes company, chose his lookalike and their soulmate, a she or hers, of the impersonator. So his lookalike, well, in that case, I think it's more of an impersonator than lookalike, over me and my Josh, including trying to strip me of my pre-2007 soccer jersey number and say it was her number instead. So we will not be working with them, which is okay. It is not like Brooks was founded in Seattle. It was founded on the East Coast and moved, moved here without the consent of us Native Americans. It is just passing through. It has never demonstrated a commitment to the locals of this region, much less us original peoples of this land and region. We look forward to the company's departure at its first available opportunity, though they have been known to be a bit tardy to act. Okay, and then, then and that's clarity for the kids if the kids see this, you know. Okay, um, and then for the, for infertility, fertility story, start the infertility, start the doctor appointments as soon as we can and feel empowered to pursue the process, right? We don't want to defeat ourselves. So empowerment there is a good thing, but some base level of confidence and then dedicate our time undivided to our non-human children instead of split between human children and non-human children. Yeah. So the Kurt squirrels are really going like, choose us, you know? Um, like, don't split your attention. We just want you to focus on non-human children. So, you know, there's the battle of, like, even if we were fertile, we, the environment in natural wildlife, in, in Native Americans, that form, and trees and stuff, they need attention too. So uh, maybe that's where we need to put our attention. But either way, those are my movie notes on Finding for Fertility 2021 film, 17 July 2024 view. And again, I'm Tanis Corley, Leonardo, she, her, hers of Seattle. I'm Tanis Leonardo, she, her, hers of Seattle.